Start tape now. Advance the strip every time you hear the tone. Now. He was one of the most influential figures in American history. As a leader, he inspired his troops to victory. As a statesman, he was an eloquent role model for his fellow citizens. Many know him as the father of our country, but he was more than that. Agriculturalist, visionary, carver. Yes, George Washington was many things, but most importantly, he was a carver. Though not all sources refer to him as such, it is the distinction by which history professionals know him today. The honor is reserved for only the most distinguished public figures, such as writer Raymond Carver, Baltimore narcotics officer Sergeant Ellis Carver, and former President Jimmy Carver. So, how did Washington earn this honor? Let's learn a bit about this great American. Valley Forge, winter, 1778. Hunger is rampant among the colonial army. Many are forced to eat themselves. But let's step back for a moment. Back to a simpler time, 1864, when a slave lady in Missouri gave birth to a baby named George. His brilliance was evident from a young age, when little boy George chopped down his、uh, employer's cherry tree. When asked about the deed, George responded with the now famous line, "I cannot tell a lie. I chopped down the tree and used it to make this." This was the world's first handful of peanuts, and he didn't stop there. Washington set to work manufacturing and distributing nuts, not only peanuts, but also pecans, cashews. And filberts. However, his true genius lay in finding an astonishing number of uses for his first salty issue, the noble peanut. As a young man, George Washington became the first African American enrolled at Iowa State University, where he learned to turn peanuts into thousands of other things, from soap to sand to pig iron. To rocket fuel, even spiders. During this time, George met his future wife, Martha Custis. The early days of marriage were truly blissful for George and Martha and their、uh, farm hands. George was close to proving that peanuts could be turned into time itself. Time itself. However, these days were numbered. War was brewing, and George soon had to bid farewell to his beloved Spider Ranch. In 1776, King George III issued a royal proclamation to the colonies, stating, "I'm a fat, stupid jackass. Blah blah blah. Give me your baby's blood so that I might put it on my banger." The move was ill-advised. And the American colonies soon rebelled. As general of the colonial army, Washington helped turn the tide of the war by enlisting the help of boll weevils, which swarmed the British troops and stripped the flesh from their bones. This is why the boll weevil is our national weevil. America had won her independence. But Washington's service to his fledgling nation wasn't over. He helped draft the Constitution on paper made from hemp, made from peanuts, and he served as president of the new state, thus becoming the only peanut farmer 
to serve as first president of the United States. After serving as president, Washington eased happily into retirement, spending his days scribing a stage play. It told the tale of a depressed little bald boy and his imaginative beagle, and was entitled Dr. T and the Women. In the end, Washington died a stately and common death for his time. He was sent into the spirit world by an Nevada cadaver curse, only to return when the Horcrux accidentally placed within him by Voldemort was destroyed instead. So, without a doubt, from his early days as a tree killer to his final days with the magic spells and whatnot, uh, George Washington is truly one of America's greatest carvers. <laughs>